Making the control surfaces for plane maker is a two-part process. The first part consists of uh, punching in the numbers we know from the research we've done. Here, for example, I found a PDF file that states all the control surface movements for the uh, ERJ140, and well, the whole 145 series actually, so that would include three, four planes even more. Uh, we've got the elevator going up by 27 degrees and down by 16.5 degrees. So let's go to control geometry. Elevator is 16 degrees. Oh, that was down. Up is 27 degrees and down is 16.5. Okay, let's see what's next. Rudder 1, right and left is equal, so it's 15. Okay, so let's move to ailerons up 25 degrees and down 15 degrees. Up 25 degrees and down 15 degrees. Okay, next on the list of our control surfaces will probably be the flaps. From doing some research, I found out that this plane uses double Fowler flaps, slotted Fowler flaps. So uh, it's got an inboard and an outboard. We're going to go inboard first. Now here, this represents the amount of stops that you have in the flap extension lever. You can either have uh, one detent, which means you either have them retracted or expanded all the way, or you can have several. I think this set of flaps has five detents. We can check it, or it might be four. I think it's 9, 18, 22, and 45. 9. 18, 22, and 45, and then we'll reduce it by 1. And let's see, that probably applies to both sets of flaps. So let, we'll duplicate that data here, 9, 18, 22, and 45. So in order to assign the control geometry, we have to go to the wings. And that's what all this stuff here is for. Basically, this represents what the resolution is that you're choosing to cut the wing into. You can cut the wing into 10 different parts, and that gives you a lot of resolution to work with. I usually leave the inside row out because that's very close to the fuselage and you want to leave some space there. I know from this picture, you can see there are two uh, spoilers, inboard and outboard spoilers, as well as flaps that are underneath. And these are the outboard flaps, and then these are the ailerons. So we'll punch in the spoilers and flaps into the wings first. So we have a speed brake, inboard. Actually, this is going to stretch all across that wing. And then we also have flaps. Let's see how that looks. Okay, those flaps are taking up too much of the plane, it would seem. So we'll have to look at what ratio have we given them. So the inboard flaps, maybe 20 here and 20 there. Let's try that. Oh, that's starting to look better. I'm assuming that these flaps are underneath those spoilers, so I don't think we're going to be able to do this uh, as accurately as depicted on this picture. But I know that I have to increase the outer edge ratio and the inner edge is pretty much fine as is control geometry let's go to the outboard edge and increase it to 25 yep that looks like a good set of flaps the spoilers are probably a bit too big so let's go and decrease the uh, size of the spoilers make it i guess you can give it a little bit more outer uh, ratio on the outer side of the wing yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on to the outboard spoilers. Add them in the wing section, wing number two. Uh, sorry, I, I meant to say outboard flaps. We have flaps on the wings there. And then the rest of the wing is occupied with ailerons. And let's see how that looks. Okay, We need to increase the resolution of this wing in order that we can add one more segment for the outboard flaps. Go 
something like that. some of these. That looks about right. Yeah, this is probably as close as we're going to get. So we've got this flap here, and it's already pretty close to being the right ratio of the wing. By the way, the ratio re refers to what percentage of the wing does this surface occupy. So if you have 0 0.1, that means it's one-tenth of the width of the wing here is occupied by this control surface. So that's what that number means. Let's go back to control geometry. Determine the the chord ratio of the second set of flaps. So I think it looked more like 15 to me. Yeah, that looks about right. Now let's worry about the ailerons. Let's go here to 25 and here to 22. That is very close. I think I'm going to stick with that. Okay, once we have those, then we can move on to the uh, tail assembly, right? And then now we go to the elevators. Yeah, it's got nice high resolution. I'm going to leave the first one out. That represents the middle here. And that's taken up by the joint to the IT vertical assembly. And now we've put an elevator all across this, this control surface here. We just haven't assigned it a ratio yet. Let's go to elevator 1 and give it a ratio of maybe. Forty. Okay, so we have the elevator. Now we need the rudder. So we switch to side view, and we're looking at probably around thirty. We have to assign some control surface to the uh, vertical stabilizer first. I'm going to go with, and again, I'm going to leave out the last bit because otherwise those control surfaces intersect with each other. The rudder could intersect with the elevator if we're not careful. So that's why I tend to like to leave out the last little bit there. Then we go to control geometry and assign the rudder a bit of a ratio here. It's probably going to be 30. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with it. And uh, right now, it's got all the moving surfaces that it needs. And what we need to do now is assign the plane some weight, and then we can take it into the simulator. Weight and balance was also something I saw somewhere in this brochure. Maximum weight, 20,090 kilograms. Google has a nice little feature here that you can type in directly uh, conversion, and it gives you the answer right here. 46,076 pounds. Let's enter that number into Plane Maker under the maximum weight. Let's go here, 46 and 76. Okay, let's go back to our brochure. It looks like this here could be the empty weight, 12,400 kilograms, 27,337. And then fuel load, 11,435 pounds of fuel. We'll leave the center of gravity at zero for now. Maybe I'll give it some forward play and aft play so that we can adjust it during the flight in the simulator. So this playroom will allow us to make some adjustments during the flight. Then we have to determine the tanks here. Uh, I would assume that the two, the two main tanks are in the wings. We can say that one tank is 5 feet lateral, the other tank is 5 feet towards the other side, inside the wings. There we go. Now they're in the wings, on the inboard side of these wings. Probably have to move them forward a little bit and outward as well. Forward by maybe 2 feet. Outward by two feet, and that looks just about right where the tanks would be. Okay, let's save this puppy and take it up into the air.